Hi, we are from Group 2 and in this video we are going to discuss about the production of Mitsano from syn gas. So first, what is Mitsano? Mitsano is the simplest alcohol which consists of a methyl group linked to a hydroxyl group. It is a light, volatile, colorless, flammable liquid with a distinctive order similar to Mitsano which is the drinking alcohol. Syn gas or known as synthesis gas is a fuel gas mixture consisting primarily of hydrogen, carbon monoxide and very often some carbon dioxide. The name comes from its use as intermediates in creating synthesis natural gas and for producing ammonia or methane. In 1923, the German chemists Alvin Tasch and Matthias Peer working for BASF develop a mean to convert synthetic gas, a mixture of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and hydrogen into methano. Methano is used to produce other chemical derivatives, which in turn are used to produce thousands of products that touch our daily lives, such as building material, foam, resin, plastic, paint, polyester and a variety of health and pharmaceutical products. Today, Mitsano is typically produced on an industrial scale using natural gas as the principal feedstock. A wood scale Mitsano plant produces 5,000 metric tons per day, or 600 million gallons, or 2.3 billion liters per year. And for the world, production rates of Mitsano is 70 million tons per year. This is the overall process flow diagram of the production of Mitsano using syngas. First, the enzyme and substrate enter fermenter to produce biogas, which is the methane and carbon dioxide in the process of fermentation. There are two types of operation for fermenter, which are batch and continuous culture. The continuous culture operation is used in this production line due to the large capacity. The product of fermentator is then split into two streams, as one of the streams enter the absorption column while another stream enter membrane unit. The carbon dioxide gas in the product stream of the fermenter is required to be removed by using the absorption column to produce a high purity of methanol. The methane separated from the absorption column is then fed to the compressor one which increases the pressure of the methane to the operating pressure of the flash distillation column for better performance of the downstream operation. Part of the methane from compressor is split and fed to the compressor 2 and heater to further increase the pressure and temperature to the operating condition of the reactor. The methanol reactor is either adiabatic reactor or cool reactor, with the hydrogen with high purity feeding into the methanol reactor, the methane undergoes process of oxidation to form methanol and this is the chemical equation of the chemical reaction. According to the research, the conversion of methanol reactor is approximately 80% which means there is still a portion of unreacted methane left in the product stream. The product along with unreacted reactant are fed into flash distillation column. The operating temperature of the flash distillation column is 64.7 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of the metan. The third product of the flash distillation column is fed into the evaporator and is split to recycle back into the distillation column for enhance the performance of the column. The metano is then purged out and flow to the ending process. This is the fermenter which is the first unit that we are discussing in this video. The fundamental idea behind the model is that the process can be simplified by using the model reductions and aggregations, so we consider the fermenter as a grey box, summarized in this figure. The feed substrate is used as input variable, which is also called as the manipulated variables. The output variable, the controlled variable, represents the volume flow. According to the research, the process transfer function can be adjusted to the ordinary differential equations of first order. This is the corresponding transfer function in the Laplace domain. 
Since the feeding period is small compared to the expected large time constant, the feeding can be regarded as the direct delta pulse while the linear response of the system was characterized by the typical step response. The reactor temperature was managed by a control system and kept constant at 40 degrees Celsius. A feedback temperature controller has been introduced into this system to control the flow rate of steam into the fermenter tank. The reason of introducing the temperature feedback controller is that the corrective action occurs as soon as the control variable deviates from the set point. Besides that, the flow rate of the substrate is being controlled by a cascade control system with the pH controller as the master controller, while the substrate flow rate controller as a slave controller. The benefit of proposing the cascade control system is that the pH control is a process with a slow dynamic which is controlled by the manipulator variable of a relatively fast process which is the flow rate of the substrate. A ratio feed controller is introduced into the system where the optimum ratio of the substrate to the impurities is fixed to have a higher productivity. The ratio controller is a type of feed forward controller where the flow rates of both substrate and impurities are measured. The output divider elements is sent to a ratio controller that compares the calculated ratio to the desired ratio and adjusts the manipulated flow rate accordingly. This is a heat exchanger which is the second main process unit in the production of methanol. The heat exchange process can be summarized into a single transfer function, where the input of the transfer function is the hot fluid flow rates fed into the heat exchanger. And the output of the transfer function is the temperature of cold fluid outlet. The variables in the heat exchanger was summarized as shown. There are three types of variables in this control system. First of all is the control variables in the heat exchanger, which is the temperature of cold fluid outlet. The manipulated variables in this unit is the flow rate of hot fluid at the entrance to the heat exchanger. Lastly, the main disturbances in this heat exchanger are surrounding temperature which varies with time and temperature as well as composition of the hot fluid inlet. Now, as a comparison, the current system does not have any control loop and consisting of indicator only. Hence, for current system, the advantage is simple to control and ship whether this advantage is slow response to change and require human interference. The proposed changes for current control system are cascade control system and steam as a replacement for the hot fluid as well as introduction of PID controller. The advantages that can be obtained from the proposed solution are ensuring the stability of the process and having a small temperature variance as the disturbance was taken into account by the cascade control loop. Besides that, we can ensure the quality of product as different temperature will result different composition of product and reaction rate. By eliminating the use of the hot fluid from the HX1 as the composition of the fluid was highly depending on the reactor. Hence, if there is any change in the reactor, it will result a huge change in heat exchanger as well as the entire system. Moreover, by applying PID controller, we are able to reduce the offset and have a faster response to change and a better performance as compared to the current system which does not apply any of the P, I or D control element and any other combination of P, I and D elements. However, there are several drawbacks for the proposed changes, such as cost increment and shorter lifespan. Cost increment was mainly due to the instrumental cost and configuration cost as more sensors and controllers are applied. Besides that, it also will have a shorter lifespan 
is due to the wear and tear that usually caused by constant adjustment. This point of evaluation, the solution is practical to be applied to the current system. Now, I will be talking about the control system for evaporator in methanol production from biogas. In plate evaporators, it is necessary to supply a consistent ratio of methanol and steam. In most cases, normal control is to maintain a constant level in the evaporator units, which is done by varying flows between the units. This, however, creates insufficient flow condition for any plate evaporator stages. A control scheme based on maintaining the methanol flows in the appropriate ratio is proposed. The ratio are adjusted to maintain the levels and the require the final concentration of methanol. This diagram shows the proposed control system. A gasket control is implemented to control the flow rate of the steam inlet to the evaporator by measuring the flow rate of the steam inlet as well as the level in the tank. Since the ratio of methanol and steam to the evaporator is important, a ratio controller is used to maintain the ratio of the inlet methanol and steam by measuring the steam flow rate and exit concentration of methanol. The ratio controller signal is also sent to the next ratio controller to control the flow rate of steam by controlling the pump. One level control is sufficient in maintaining the fluid level of the evaporator. In terms of the practicability of the proposed control system, the basic dynamics of each evaporator are very fast and in steady state, the process stream flows maintain nearly constant ratios. Therefore, the control of evaporator needs to maintain the correct relation between the inter-unit flows and maintain the system at steady state. This can be done by rationing the input methanol flows to proceeding the output methanol flow with the methanol feed being ratioed to the steam input. The levels in the evaporators can then be maintained by adjusting the ratio of the discharge methanol stream flow. The ratio of the methanol feed to the steam is adjusted, as in current practice, to ensure the required final methanol concentration. The advantages of the proposed control system are that less controllers are needed. This is because the feed forward control proposed has minimized the disturbance to the evaporators. Besides that, the final methanol concentration can be maintained by just controlling the ratio of the methanol feed and inlet stream to the evaporators without having constantly changing of flow rate and causing the system to be unsteady. In single loop control, the controller's set point is set by an operator, and its output drives a final control element. The example of cascade control system is the cascade control system which introduced to control the substrate flow rate in the fermenter tank. In a cascade control arrangement, there are two or more controllers of which one controller's output drives the set point of the another controller. The pH controller acts as the master controller which drives the set point, while the substrate flow rate controller acts as the slave controller which receives the set point. The pH control is a process with slow dynamic which is controlled by the manipulated variable of a relatively fast process which is the flow rate of the substrate. The conventional feedback control system is applied to the temperature control system of the fermenter tank. The temperature of the fermenter tank is measured and used to adjust the cooling water flow rate. The reactor temperature was managed by a control system and kept constant at 40 degrees Celsius. Thank you for watching.